Hey everybody, this is Brian with Bear Cards 34. Today I'm coming back with a little bit of a different video. I was lucky enough to be able to attend the Utah State University Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremony last night in Logan, Utah. And two of my all-time favorite players, in fact, I would say probably my two favorite players from Utah State, uh, in in you know my lifetime that I was able to see play, Robert Turbin and Bobby Wagner were both inducted. Uh, because of the COVID-19 protocols last year, they did not have the ceremony. And so this year they did uh, this year's uh, inductees as well as last year's. So last year, Bobby Wagner was inducted, and this year Robert Turbin was. So they were teammates with Utah State University and also the Seattle Seahawks. They were both drafted back in 2012 in a very, very good draft for the Seahawks, which also included Russell Wilson. And the two of them were able to win a Super Bowl championship, played in two Super Bowls together. Turbin went on to play very briefly with the Cowboys and Browns and then spent his final couple years with the Colts as the third down back. And then he was able to return. He and Marshawn Lynch both returned to Seattle for the playoffs a couple years ago when the Seahawks running backs were injured and it was depleted. So anyway, it was a really, really cool night last night. They were both in attendance and gave great speeches. And it was just really cool to see them, along with some other uh, uh, athletes from Utah State, uh, including a couple of basketball players, be inducted. It was just a really cool night. So uh, I thought what I'd do today, um, I've got my Utah State uh, mug, which my buddy Card Cash hooked me up with recently, and I'm just going to show you guys my favorite cards of, of Bobby Wagner and Robert Turbin, and uh, real quick I'll just show you just a little video from last night, so you guys can check that out. who was there during Robert Turbin's time was, was Kerwin Williams, who had uh, some really nice runs in the NFL, uh, especially with the Cardinals, where he played for a little bit. And uh, the guy who was really a big part of, of turning the Utah State University football program around uh, with Turbin and Wagner was Chucky e. Keaton, who's actually a coach on the staff with Utah State right now. But he was a great player. He had some injuries that slowed him down, but but he was just a, a fantastic player, a lot of fun to watch. So anyway, last night was a lot of fun. Uh, back in the day, uh, before my time, obviously, Utah State is best known for Merlin Olson, who's just just fantastic. Uh, he was you know one of the all-time NFL greats. And they used to have quite a good football team with players like Alty Taylor, Lionel Aldridge, Cornell Green, Bill Munson, among others. And the program, you know, when I was a little kid, definitely was struggling. Uh, but Turbin, Wagner, and uh, Chucky e. Keaton and those guys really turned it around. Uh, some of the other, you know, Utah State guys in the NFL, Kyler Fackrell, uh, Nick and Zach Vigil, 
Kevin Curtis, Al Smith, who was, was really good in the 80s and early 90s, Chris Cooley, Pro Bowl tight end, among others. Uh, so anyway, these two, though, were my favorites, uh, you know, from my, my time of actually seeing uh, players play. So anyway, I'll go ahead and, and show you guys what I've got, uh, some of my favorite cards anyway. So uh, the first ones I'll show, my only two Bobby Wagner rookie cards are these two upper deck ones. And I got one of them, I can't remember which one, one of these is from Steeler Cards 7, and the other one I picked up. But anyway, these are my only two rookie cards of his. If you follow my channel long enough, you know that you know I was into football cards quite a bit uh, as a kid and as a teenager. And then kind of got away from the hobby. But it was actually Turban and Wagner that really got me back into the hobby. They were my two original PC guys, along with Alex Smith, who played at the University of Utah. So after the Seahawks' first year with Turban and Wagner, I really started to be interested in collecting their cards and collecting cards again. And so they were really the ones who got me back into the hobby. So really 2013 is when I really got back into it. Unfortunately, yeah, I don't have. I, I'd like to get a Bobby Wagner Prism rookie. Hopefully, one of these days I will. But just to kind of show you a few of my favorite Wagner cards, and some of these you may have seen in mail days. But this rookies and stars, Great American Heroes, which is numbered to 25. I uh, really like that one. Uh, this Prism right here, numbered out of 175. I got this unparalleled. And this one is numbered out of 11 out of 25. I see it right there. That's a nice one. And then I've got this Don Russ gold numbered to 50 of Wagner. And this one numbered out of 54, his jersey number. I think I've got, yeah, number 31 out of 54. I love Phoenix. This is These are sweet cards. So this variation right here is numbered out of 149. And, you know, Wagner, you know, he went into the uh, Utah State Hall of Fame. He's absolutely going to go to the NFL Hall of Fame as well. There's going to be no question about that. He could retire today, and, and he's basically in. So this is a Rookies and Stars Bobby Wagner autograph that I have, numbered out of 999. And then I really like this one as well. This is numbered out of only 25. And this is he and Bruce Irvin. So a dual autograph. Really like that one. Prime signatures. So definitely happy to have that. So those are my Bobby Wagner cards. Uh, the ones that I have collected thus far. So with Robert Turbin... Um, He's a lot more affordable, which is why I think I have a lot more of his. Uh, but I always like these kind of throwback cards. So you got one right here, one here. Uh, this is, a, you know, a, a, kind of a shout out, a nod to the 1984 top set. So I really like that. Uh, I've got the Panini Prism Turban Rookie right here. And this is numbered out of 99. In fact, I have two of these from Bowman Sterling, both out of 99. Just a beautiful card. They really made nice ones. This one right here is out of 99 as well from Topps Finest. And then I've got, what are these? The Sepia, I believe. And this one's numbered out of 99. Nice to have that. Uh, I'm not sure if this is part of his glove or what, but it's a patch card right here. I really like the patch on that. Seattle has some nice colors for these. And then I've got quite a few autographs. Well, I do have, let me show you this. So this is the Topps Chrome uh, PSA 10 Turban Rookie Card. And I've got this. This is my only uh, Beckett uh, Auto, or I mean Slab. So it's a 9.5 Gem Mint with the Auto at a 10. Just a really pretty looking card there. Really like that. And... Then I've got a whole bunch of his autographs. I'll just go through them kind of quickly, but uh, this Panini Prism right here, numbered out of 250. I've got this one of him in his Utah State uniform. Uh, airbrushed out, of course, unfortunately. Uh, we've got Top Strata. This one out of 286. Here's a Tops, not numbered. Rookies and Stars out of 199. 
This one right here, Elite, out of 49. I really like that one. Uh, this one right here, Limited Turban, out of 99. And then I've got the Inception Auto. And this is a little bit of a different one from Prominence, kind of autographed on a Seattle football field. All right, a few more of these. Out of 99, Tops Platinum. Uh, clear Cut Strata, right there. And then, what is this? Top something, I don't even know. Five Star something or other. Numbered out of 55, kind of a cool one. And right here we've got a little bit of jersey and a little bit of the football, National Treasures. And that one is numbered out of 49. Crown Royale. We got a War Room NFL Draft Rook, uh, Auto. And then these are, let's see, well, I'll show this one real quick. This one right here, Top's Finest, out of 25. Kind of a nice short print. And this was from a mail day from a long time ago, but I bought a, a just a, a bunch. These are numbered out of 1,353. His hand probably got kind of tired on these. Okay, so I, I got a bunch of these, just different variations of you know, different portions portions of the patch. I think my two favorite were these with these two right here. So anyway, yeah. And then I have the uh, one of those uh, playbooks, Sea Hulk. Uh, he had a couple of nicknames: Turbo Sea Hulk. Those were a couple of them. So this one I think is numbered out of fifty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So happy to have that as well. So anyway, it was just a really fun night for me. Uh, I was able to meet Robert Turbin afterwards, uh, got a picture with him, able to talk to him a little bit, and it was kind of cool. So he played for the Cowboys for a very, very brief time, and he was there. And I don't know if it was his manager or, or who it was, but there, there was somebody with him who was kind of helping to direct uh, what was going on with the meet and greet. And uh, the person in front of me had a handful of photos of Robert Turbin, uh, pictures from each of his teams, including one for the Cowboys. And when Robert Turbin saw the cowboy picture, he seemed to genuinely be excited about that. His manager got excited. And they actually asked the guy if they could keep the photo of him on the cowboys. Uh, I don't know that he had any. Uh, and so, yeah, the guy gave Robert Turbin the cowboys picture. And he seemed genuinely happy to have that with his, you know, his collection. Uh, but anyway, it was a really nice night. Uh, Turbin and Wagner afterwards were able to take a couple pictures together up on the stage. Uh, I was up near the front taking a couple pictures, so I'll, I'll try to include those in this as well. So anyway, that's that's my video as far as the, the card portion of that, except for I do have one mail day that is related to this. So this is just a numbered card. I think I, I paid like a dollar for it, maybe two. Um, but I just figured, hey, it's Turbin. Add it to my collection. This is numbered out of 170 right here. Definitely happy to have that one. So just another numbered card for the collection, for my Turban collection. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. What I'm going to do is I, I have video from my phone of Turban and Wagner's uh, induction speeches. So if you're interested in checking that out, just you know keep this playing and you can watch it. If you're here just for the cards, then... That's the end. But anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching. And uh, feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll be back with more videos in the near future. And uh, as always, go Bears, even though this had nothing to do with the Bears at all. But I will tell you, um, for many, many years now, the Bears' long snapper, Patrick Scales, uh, he's a Utah State Aggie, and he's a free agent this year. I'd love to see him coming back. Don't know if they'll be bringing him back this year or not. Uh, but he's a been a Chicago Bear for quite some time and, and I think there's another player another Aggie on the team I need to double check but anyway it's always nice when uh, your favorite college players uh, end up on your favorite NFL team so anyway hope you guys enjoy that stick around if you want to see the additional videos that I'll tag on to the end of this and until next time everybody hope you're well and I'll talk to you soon
comes to us from uh, the Los Angeles Rams, his new team, and we're talking about Bobby Wagner. Woo! Linebacker Bobby Wagner started 46 of the 48 games he played at Utah State. And as a senior in 2011, helped the Aggies to their first bowl game in 14 years and the first winning season in 15 years. He tied a school record with 446 career tackles. He was the Seattle Seahawks' second round pick in the 2012 NFL Draft. He was chosen first team All Pro six times and was named to the NFL All Decade team as he helped Seattle to back-to-back -back Super Bowls, including a victory in 2014. He recently joined the Los Angeles Rams. I was very humbled. Um, I thought it was amazing to be recognized for my time at Utah State. and um, To have an opportunity to come back, I thought it was great. You know, Utah State kind of came and got me. My coach was um, very active on trying to give me a scholarship. And uh, the guy that I kind of dealt with a lot was his name was Danilo Robinson. Sure. And so he came down to um, Ontario, California, and, and we had tons of conversations. And, um, you know, I ended up coming out here on my visit and, and locking in and saying, yeah, I definitely felt like we had the pieces. Um, we just had to, you know, figure out a way to execute. And, you know, I think it was myself and, and Turb and a couple other guys that took it upon ourselves to um, make sure that we set the standard. Um, for, you know, our year, the years to come, and, you know, we made it important to us. Yeah, I had um, Mark for my first year, but Kevin Clune was the guy, he was the guy that helped me grow into the player that I was at Utah State, um, the guy I spent all my time with. Um, he helped teach me the game, and um, he was there for the majority of my career. I think as a team, when we beat uh, BYU, um, I think it was a Friday night game, and uh, I think we stormed the field, I think that was probably one of the memorable one when uh, you know you had the team storm the field, but uh, you know we had a lot of memorable mo moments here. Yeah, I definitely remember that Hawaii game. I think we were down. I can't remember how much points, maybe twenty one. I don't know, give or take. And you know it was kind of like a turning point. If we lose that game, the season's probably going in the direction that it's been the last few years, and um, we just wasn't happy. We didn't want to. We didn't want to do it. We wanted to change. We wanted to start establishing a winning culture here and. Um, you know, I think like the week before, two weeks before, we had this like team meeting where, um, you know, we talked about all the things that we were going to do, but in that Hawaii game, we weren't doing it. And so, you know, I felt like it was at that point, we either going to um, do what we said we were going to do or we're not. And, you know, every guy in that room made the decision to, to be a man of their work. So we're tired of losing. Um, we knew that we had uh, great people in our, in, our, um, in our group. We knew we had a lot of talent. And we just wasn't being as disciplined as we needed to be. And, you know, from that point forward, guys just, uh, you know, made, changed their mind and said they're going to be disciplined, do things right, and, and uh, have a winning mentality. Woo! Welcome, Bobby Wagner. Reminded me of my time here and it reminded me of my, my first time, my recruiting trip when I came out here. Um, I actually watched JC break a record, and so I was like, man, if I come here, I'm gonna break a record too. <laughs> and, um, you know, I came from California and uh, I've never seen snow before in my life. And so I just knew what the cartoons showed, and I just, you know, when people in the cartoons, they just walked on the snow, so I thought that's proper protocol. <laughs> and so I'm headed to the game, I was watching Break a Record, and I'm like, all right, let me walk on the snow like the cartoons. And I fell deep, like knee deep into the snow. <laughs> and um, that's when I asked myself, man, am I really coming here? Like, <laughs> it's, it's cold, I don't have the proper attire. Um, but it was one of the best decisions that I could make uh, coming here. Uh, you know, funny story. I didn't know the story until um, until I made it to the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl. And I went back to school to 
to talk with my coach. And um, he was talking to me about how I got the scholarship. And Utah State was my only scholarship. I had no other scholarship. Um, and I got a late start. I uh, thought I was a basketball player. I thought I was going to be a but, <laughs> you know, hype didn't really work out in my favor. Um, and so I remember him uh, coming to me and telling me, like, this, this Stanford story. And I thought it was, you know, I had a TA class in, um, in high school. And basically, TA class, you just, you know, you help your coach out. And long story short, you don't have to go to that class. <laughs> and so I, uh, I, put it, I put it at my first period. So I just slept in. And, you know, when I slept in, I woke up to like 50 text messages and phone calls. And I thought something happened. And basically, Stanford was at the school, and they were trying to talk to me, but I missed them. And so in my mind, I thought that was a Stanford story, me oversleeping. And so he asked, he told me the actual story and how I got the scholarship. So I guess he was at this coaching, um, he was at this coaching um, event, and he walked over to uh, Jim Harbaugh. I guess he was at a bar or something, and he said, "Hey, you know, we have this uh, linebacker. We think, uh, you know, he'll be great." And Jim was just like, nah, we're good. We're set a linebacker. So he walked over from where he was at straight to Utah State. And he said, hey, you see that guy over there? Um, they're going to offer him tomorrow. If you don't offer him, then uh, you're going to lose out on him. So Utah State offered me because they thought Stanford was going to offer me. So, um, so that's actually how I ended up here. Um, I mean, I guess the internet didn't work back then. So. Um, so, uh, but I, I came here, I got to be around people like Turb, and it just really inspired me, really, um, you know, I grew a lot as a man, as a person. Um, so I'm thankful for Danilo Robinson, who uh, recruited me here. I'm thankful for uh, Coach Anderson, uh, Coach Plume, which I mentioned in the video. Thank you for my brothers that I met while I was out here. Um, my dad, I'm thankful for him being here. Um, I knew growing up, when I saw him, and I saw how good he looked, I was like, man, I got a chance. Um, and so uh, I'm extremely thankful for my teammates and thankful for uh, you guys as fans. I always hear your support. Um, one of the things that me and Turb constantly talked about was uh, changing um, the way people viewed this program. Um, when I was at Utah State and a little bit when I was in Seattle, every time somebody came up to me and asked me uh, what school I went to, I would say Utah State and they would say, oh, was that the blue team or the red team? And I'm like, the blue team, oh, okay, so BYU. Like, no, I said Utah State. Um, and so I wanted to change that. And so um, it was a fulfilling moment, you know, uh, some years back when, um, you know, I had somebody come up to me and ask me what school I went to, and I said Utah State. And they said, oh, the Aggies. And uh, that, that let me know that we're moving in the right direction. And, um, you know, I was grateful to have my brother Turk um, help do that. And so I'm honored to be. Uh, not with all these guys and girls, and, and I'm uh, grateful to be here. Um, this was Robert Turbin is one of five running backs in Utah State football history to rush for 3,000 career yards, including 1,000. 517 yards and 19 touchdowns as a junior in 2011 when he was named the WAC Offensive Player of the Year. His 51 career touchdowns is an Aggie record, and he tied the school record of 40 rushing touchdowns. Seattle's fourth round draft pick in 2012, he spent eight years in the NFL, helping the Seahawks win the Super Bowl in 2014. Our you know, being inducted into the Hall of Fame uh, was just, you know, pure excitement, joy. I don't even know if I really had a real response, you know, when John called me. Uh, but I just, you know, in that moment, I was just so honored. And I just started to think back on all the things uh, that I did here at Utah State. And I couldn't be more than grateful. The reason why I chose Utah State over other schools was because you know, quite frankly, the competitor in me loved to be the underdog. Uh, I wanted to go to a place where I really felt like I could make a difference, uh, bring a certain winning mentality that perhaps hadn't been around at this program for a long time. 
the other schools that had interest that had interest in me, you know, these are schools that I felt like were going to be good with or without me. And uh, at Utah State, not saying that they wouldn't have been competitive if I never showed up, uh, but certainly felt like uh, I can make a difference in a bunch of different ways. Plus, my dream was always to be Barry Sanders. Uh, growing up, wanting to play running back, and so Utah State uh, recruited me offensively, as opposed to some other schools recruiting me to play defense. Also, had a big uh, part of me in my decision as well. We had a very tight group uh, in the running back room, and we held ourselves to a very uh, high standard. And uh, we always wanted to be the best group on the team, uh, not from a statistical standpoint, but from a leadership standpoint. We wanted to be the group that always set the tone, practice games, everything that was involved, workouts in the gym, you know, conditioning out here on the field, all of it. We wanted to be, we wanted to be the group to set the tone. And so uh, I love those guys like brothers, uh, and I'm grateful for the relationship that we have because we still talk today. Coach Tuiaki is the one that took my game to the next level. And the reason why I was able to have the success that I had, not only at the collegiate level, but be able to then take those talents uh, to the next level uh, was because of Coach Elijah Tuiaki. My son's name is Elijah. And it's because of Coach Tuiaki. I just, I just Americanized it. Where his is, you know, more where he's from, Elisa, I think is how you really pronounce it. But he was immensely influential in my life. A lot of different memories come to mind, but in particular, when you talk about the 2011 season and, you know, you talk about all the accolades, right, the individual accolades, none of that happens without our team. None of it happens without going to Hawaii week six and finding a way to come back after being down, I think it was 21-7 or 24-7 or something like that at halftime and finding a way to come back and win that game and making plays, you know, fake punts and things like that, right, that we were able to execute throughout that football game. And what it did was it gave us confidence. It's as simple as that. I mean, we had confidence going into the season, but when you lose games, naturally, you know, your, your, your confidence may decrease, right? Uh, we came back after a long trip, and uh, it just set the tone for the rest of the season, and that's what sticks out to me. The, the people here is, is why I stayed. You know, I had an opportunity to transfer after Coach Guy and that coaching staff got released, right? Because you don't use a year of, of, of eligibility, right? If you transfer because of your coaches getting fired. Uh, but I chose to stay, and I wanted to honor my commitment to be a Utah State Aggie uh, for my collegiate career, and I wanted to stand on that. And the support that I got from the community uh, was second to none. Uh, they were always ready to cheer us on. They were always wanting us to be successful, uh, and they were willing to support us either way. Uh, despite having so many down years, every single year, every single new year, there was this anticipation of, we're gonna be great this year. Nobody had any doubts. In the midst of it, the support was just like any other school. And I tell people all the time, that chant, there's, there's a lot of schools around the country now that do the, I believe that we will win. And I have to remind them, I, I just want you guys to know that that originated here at Utah State. Woo! I think everybody can agree with me on that. I believe we will win. Hell so yeah! yeah. <laughs> First, I'd like to thank God. All things are possible with Him. Um, I'd like to thank Utah State, the selection committee, the university for all your support uh, and selecting all of us uh, to be a part of this class. I want to congratulate uh, this class uh, for being Hall of Famers. Some of you guys, all of you guys, are inspirational to me and many of the folks that are sitting out uh, in the stands. Um, a lot of people used to ask me why I chose Utah State. And uh, I remember getting recruited by a coach. His name was John Rushing. Unfortunately, he's not with us anymore. Uh, but he was a fantastic person and a fantastic coach. And uh, I remember him coming to Irvington High School in Fremont, and he comes up to me and says, look like you got a pretty good head on your shoulders. Then you play D1 football. 
I said, uh, I responded, I said, yeah, I think so. I think I could be pretty good. And uh, they went on to offer me a scholarship. And I told the story in the video of, of why I chose USU, but my father in the process would ask me, you know, he said, uh, where do you feel like you can make the biggest impact, not only as a ball player, uh, but as a community member, as a person, as an individual. Uh, and I chose Utah State. Utah State supported my dream. I mentioned that I wanted to be like Barry Sanders. That's a true story. Our dream was to always be a running back. I've been playing running back since I was 10 years old. And despite Coach Rushing, who was a defensive coach, by the way, coming to recruit me, Coach Guy and that staff, they supported my dream to be an offensive player, and the rest is history. And I'm extremely thankful um, for that. I went through a lot of challenges here at Utah State. It really grew me up. Uh, my very first year, and I came in as a 17-year-old freshman. I didn't turn 18 until December of that year, so my dad had to sign everything for me. I felt, I felt ill-equipped to even be in college at the time. Uh, but uh, the first, very first training camp, um, I suffered a, a pretty bad injury. I tore the capsule at the bottom of my big toe, okay? And uh, yeah, you kind of need that when you're playing running back. Uh, and for a long time, you know, we, we couldn't figure out how to fix this thing or, or, or what was going on. You know, here's this 17 year old kid with a lot of potential and uh, he's injured for the first time ever. I thought I was invincible. I'd never been hurt before, so I didn't know what that felt like. Uh, and uh, we couldn't get this figured out. So finally I go to Salt Lake City and uh, I meet with the uh, specialist, his name was Dr. Nickish. And we were able to get an MRI uh, and uh, we were able to figure it out. And, uh, and I couldn't be more thankful uh, to him and then the Utah State staff uh, for putting together a phenomenal uh, you know, rehabilitation process for me to be able to get back. This was an injury that everybody was unfamiliar with. And so I don't know if Lori's here today, uh, but if it wasn't for her, you know, I wouldn't be standing up here uh, today. And so I'm extremely grateful for Lori and the work that she's done and all of the trainers uh, in the training room. I told the story about 2008 after Coach Guy and that staff was released. Uh, my dream school was Notre Dame and uh, my family's here and they were Notre Dame fans growing up. My cousin is here, his mom, my auntie was a big Notre Dame fan and so naturally, you know, I became a Notre Dame fan. We watched the movie Rudy, I don't know how many times, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And it inspired me. But as I mentioned, I wanted to honor my commitment. And when we were, you know, when the discussions were going around about who was going to be the new head coach, uh, and there were some rumblings about Coach Anderson, who was before that the defensive coordinator for University of Utah, I remember being at home and watching that game, Utah versus Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. And I said, man, is that going to be our head coach? You know, uh, I was really inspired by that. And uh, it was one of the, you know, it played a big part in my, de my decision to stay here. Um, this community has been nothing but great to me. I've had a lot of great coaches over the course of my life. We don't achieve any of this by ourselves. A lot of great teammates as well. I've got one of my coaches here, Coach Jerry, who's been, Rich, put your hand up, Coach. Yeah, he's been coaching me since I was in like the sixth grade. <laughs> Basketball and football, okay? Um, and he always pushed me and believed that I could do anything that I wanted to do in life. I could achieve uh, all of the highest dreams uh, that I've ever had for myself. Uh, I spoke about Coach Tuiaki, uh, who was my running backs coach here at Utah State. Completely changed the game for me. Uh, not only did he make me a better football player, and prepare me for the next level. Uh, but we had a lot of talks about, uh, you know, faith and being a good person, being a good man. Uh, he helped me develop into a better teammate, leader, a father that I am today, friend, brother, cousin, all of those things. And uh, I couldn't be more grateful for him uh, as well. My proudest moment, you know, I, t I spoke about the the game against Hawaii, and that question was, 
you know, really based on football. But really my proudest moment was uh, getting academic honors uh, here at Utah State, both in 2010 and 2011. Now, when I first got here, they <laughs> first got here, though, uh, I was a little bit of a knucklehead, you know, I didn't always apply myself, and I spoke about my injury as a true freshman, and so, you know, naturally, when, you, when you're going through that process, the only thing you can think about is, man, getting back on the field, right, something that I've had since I was 10 years old was taken away from me, and I wasn't quite sure really how to handle that, you know, I've never gone through a re rehabilitation process before. I've never had surgery before, which is another story. Uh, but, uh, and so I was solely focused on returning to the playing field and achieving the dreams that I had for myself as a football player. So we went through this long process and 2008 comes around and I'm finally able to get back. And uh, I'm back to doing what I love to do. Uh, but on the flip side of it, uh, I'm slipping in what's really most important and that's education. And so uh, they put together this program and uh, I got paired with a couple of different tutors um, throughout my career. But then I got paired with Allison Noble, who's here in the stands as well. Where's your hand, please? <laughs> so, so Allison is really special because academic honors doesn't happen without her. Graduating college doesn't happen without her. And the program that was in place was like, I think it was only for a year, and then you had to like rotate, new uh, get, get a new tune in the next year. And Allison, she was gonna, you know, she did her thing and she was gonna go and do other things. And I said, I am not coming to study hall without Allison being my tutor for you know the next year. And uh, and so they had to convince her to come back, and she only came back for me and Matt Austin too. But she only came back for me. And, uh, and she spent tons of hours uh, teaching me things, showing me things. I mean, she's just a brilliant person. And, uh, and I'm forever grateful for you for that, Allison. Thank you. Um, my time here was great, but it wasn't perfect. I'm not a perfect human, human being, right? We all make mistakes. The worst ones are the ones that affect others negatively, right? Um, and they say, you know, you should never have any regrets in life, but uh, there's certainly a couple of choice moments that I wish I could have back. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, it made me a better person overall. My experience at Utah State, all the people who were there for me in those mistakes, all the people who were there for me in the great moments uh, and everything in between, made me a better teammate, person, leader, father, like I mentioned earlier, and friend. Uh, and so I couldn't be more grateful to Logan, Utah, and I couldn't be more grateful to Utah State University. Thanks. Woo!